this time is uh, we'd like to recognize a special individual who uh, we'd like to afford the opportunity to come and share some um, some traditional knowledge with us, some some tribal history of the Eau Claire area. And uh, we're calling upon Dr. Rick St. Germain, who comes to us from La, La Cruz Ray Ojibwe community. He is a uh, professor emeritus here at UW Eau Claire. And uh, I'm going to give the uh, doctor here, Dr. St. Germain, just a few uh, minutes here uh, to, uh, to share with us. Uh, I know you have some things that you'd like to say, and uh, we're going to afford you that opportunity at this time, sir. Miigwech. Ashke. Nindwe Maganadug. Ye yet. Miigwech will win them. Ye nina win when a dog was young. Dananaba shka ye on. A no way. Come away, Guan Yu Manadu. Me wade, Odawa Zai, Ginning Wen Chian, Me wade, Wapagni Wen, Me we are no, Me Shoma Sanan, Gain the Wayne de Ma Gayan, Gainino Wen Wade. Folks, uh, it's great to be back. I left Eau Claire about a dozen years ago after teaching over at the university. I was a history professor and a education professor. And Believe it or not, I, earlier I was walking around and it's amazing how many of my former students were able to come up and say hi. And good friends at Eau Claire. It's a great place. It's a rich history here. And the tribal people who are here today are very proud of their heritage, the customs and the values that they have preserved over the years and have transmitted down into this modern period of time. This powwow is a living example of that heritage and the fact that people are so dedicated to hold on to that system, that way of life. This Chippewa River Valley here and also over by Stout, the uh, Red Cedar River Valley was rich with tribal history going back thousands of years. And that's getting more into archaeology times, but nonetheless, folks, this area up here was very attractive. It was a place that could sustain a living thousands of years ago. And recently, we were up in a pipestone quarry near Rice Lake, digging in a quarry that our people had used for hundreds of years. The Dakota people, uh, Bonag, the um, Ojibwe Anishinaabe. This river valley is rich, and I do more of a recent history going back. Folks, think about this. 199 years ago this month, 13 tribes from Wisconsin met at Prairie du Chien to sign a treaty of peace and friendship. 199 years ago this month. So uh, there were 5,000 Indians that assembled down there and began a series of treaties that ended up in their loss, their loss of their lands all over Wisconsin. 54 million acres of land was given up by those 13 tribes from all over the state. Let's go back to the Chippewa River Valley and the Red Cedar Valley. Black River Valley and so on. Folks, this area north of us was rich in pine trees and it represented a value to the Americans who were moving into this region uh, about 150 or so years ago. And with that was the loss of our lands and placed on reservations. But I would like to go into the valley. The Buanag people were here first and we know that they probably went back over a thousand years in this region. This was the borderland here between the forests of the north, the pine uh, trees, and also the grasslands, this region and south. So this was a really rich and valuable region. Eau Claire is at a very special place. And what happened were the Anishinaabe people were moving in from the north. We uh, came in on Lake Superior and eventually we moved down into this region. And uh, 
it ignited a series of wars that lasted over 120 years. Folks, this region around Eau Claire was once known for a span of 40 miles to the north and 40 miles to the south up here. This was known as the war road of the Midwest. And here there were many battles that were fought between the Dakota and uh, the Anishinaabe tribes. And, you know, to go through that, of course, is a lot of history, and I used to teach a course on that. Nonetheless, it's important for us to know the significance of this region. Over at, o at UW Eau Claire, they had what was called a council oak tree that stood there for hundreds of years. And people used to wonder, Rick, they would ask me, was there really a council held there between tribes? You darn right there were. There was a man by the name of Michel Cadat and another man by the name of Monsieur Perrault from down south near Lake Pepin. And they used to meet in that region and they work out a series of truces peacetime periods of pause from the war and so that council oak tree down on the campus of UW Eau Claire was significantly a place where Perot and Kadat used to meet and work out a, a peace and then the tribes would come together the, the Dakota and the Ojibwe would come together and there they would very tenuously for about three months, uh, break up together in mixed hunting groups and they would go out and hunt the deer and the elk and even the buffalo from this region. So this area is rich and our tribal people have preserved that history. They guard it carefully. They're proud of their background. This place really, the Eau Claire Chippewa Falls, Menominee region and places in the surrounding area are really a special place to all the tribal uh, the tribal groups throughout of our, our state. I really appreciate this opportunity just to say hello to folks and share with you a little bit about our history here and to let you know that uh, this gathering of tribal people here to celebrate our heritage is very significant and there's a good reason they're here. Miigwech. Wow. Thank you, Professor St. Germain, for those good words and imparting that, uh, that knowledge with each and every one of us here.